Hey, what is up everyone? Tyler Ramsby here. Welcome back to another video. If you're watching this on the Hacksmutter Twitch channel, welcome. Good to have you here. If you're watching this after the fact on my YouTube channel, also good to have you here. I have a special treat for you. I got a special treat for me. I am here with Mr. OSCP himself, Nate, uh, who is already uh, part of the Twitch channel. But Nate, welcome to a second interview. How are you doing? Thanks. Thanks. I'm doing good. A lot better than, uh, than last time. That's, that's, that's exciting stuff. And for those of you yeah. unaware of the, the narrative or the, the series here, uh, Nate took the OSCP the first time and unfortunately he failed it. So we made a video called lessons from failing the OSCP and oddly enough, it's one of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel. I think part of it is just the vulnerability of uh, admitting you failed and, and having lessons learned. But I think I even said in that video, like, man, I hope we get to come back shortly and make a second video called lessons from passing the OSCP. And I'm just going to say, I predicted the future. Here we are. We are here. <laughs> here we are. Tyler and Nate from the future, speaking to Tyler and Nate from the past, but let's just to set the scene, let's begin with the classic elevator question. If we had never met, never knew who you were, uh, and you only had a few minutes to introduce yourself. Who is Mr. OSCP himself? Um, well, thanks again. You're going to make me blush. Uh, so <laughs> I'm a, a student at DSU, Dakota State University. I've been part-time student there for a long time. Um, I'm also a family man. I got two kids, a wife. I work full-time, have been working full-time all the way through school. Um, I like to hack. You know, I'm into a little bit of everything, hardware, software, uh, I like wireless, uh, domain hacking, you know, just a little bit of everything. I like to rip stuff apart, break it, and then put it back together the way that makes sense to me. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got. You ever looked into hacking drones before? No, but I've Ra thought about strapping a, a Raspberry Pi to a drone, and then you could fly it around and hack Wi-Fi with it. That would be fun. So that would be cool. Um, yeah. I was talking to a dude on Discord. I met him. I think he pinged me on the offensive security Discord. I don't know how we got, got to talking, but that's his job, right? So he works for a security company, and their focus is hacking drones. And he said, like, a lot wow. of them just communicate over Telnet. They're, like, really easy to hack and take control of when they're flying around if you can get a connection to them. Uh, fascinating. That's cool. I've, I've, that was just a conversation from today, so I haven't dug into it myself, but... Uh, like you said, you hack everything. So maybe the next thing is you can hack some drones and some drones. Maybe you can yeah. Stream it on hack smarter Twitch channel, like a drone hacking competition. <laughs> I don't even know if they make such a thing, but maybe that's the next. We could do the first. That's going to blow up. Yeah. yeah. It will be, we'll, we'll have that up on John Hammond. I don't think he's done a drone hacking video <laughs> so I can finally yeah. <laughs> have one up on him. Um, and you said, you mentioned DSU and just for context, you say I've been going there for a while, but like. You're almost done, right? What do you have left until you are finally done with that degree? So I, I'm still on the fence about being finally done. I don't know if I'll ever be finally done, um, but I'm currently pursuing the associates. So I have one course left. I've been going since 2017. So do the math. I don't know. Is that five years? Coming up on five years for an associates, but one hey. course left you finish it you finish it and for those once again unaware about dsu uh it's unique that it's a small school in the state of south dakota but it has such a big reputation i just noticed uh i can't think of his name the simply cyber guy he he he's doctor oh, i can't think of his name but i was like man what's he a doctorate in and he has a doctorate in cyber defense and i was like i'm pretty sure only one school offers that and sure enough he went to dsu and now he has a pretty big platform online um and he's an alumni of dsu so just share with us you can you can promote dsu a little bit what the heck is dsu and why do they have such a good reputation based on your experience there yeah so i could have probably done a lot better uh while i was being sold on dsu and you know all the cool stuff that they do but they have a cyber lab uh they're recognized by a, a whole bunch of different people as being like an aficionado of pumping out just these cyber ops geniuses right um and i the course material there that <laughs> well no not yet <laughs> maybe someday um but that i mean that's what put dsu on the map for me is they're they're really well known especially in this area there's not a whole lot in the upper midwest for uh tech schools or you know hacking dsu is really the only thing in the area so um yeah i mean i i went on campus one time and did a tour 
And that was way back, you know, 2016, 2017. They had this really cool cyber lab set up where you could go in and look at all the cabinets. And they brought students in there to play with hardware. And when you're doing your networking courses, you're actually hands-on switches and stuff. So it's, it's pretty neat stuff. That is cool. What I noticed about them is they have like an esports team. Like you can get a scholarship to play Counter-Strike out of all things like that just blew my mind like i should have discovered that back in high school when i was like hardcore into gaming like forget f a football scholarship get a gaming scholarship go to dsu and uh hack stuff is guitar hero one of the games you get a scholarship <laughs> in guitar so. hero because i do that you're pretty good at that <laughs> yeah well that's because um, i suck at every other game <laughs> i'm looking over at the chat jack corrected me it's dr gerald auger that's right that's his name he just got uh, partnership with TCM Security. So he has a course now in TCM Security about uh, compliance, but he went to DSU for, I think for his bachelor's and his doctorate, if I remember right, when I was looking at his LinkedIn profile. So cool stuff. And I should say, um, uh, for those of you watching on Twitch, if you do have questions for Nate or for me, uh, we want to prioritize your questions. I have a list of questions we can run through, and I honestly just make stuff up as we go. It's more of a conversation. But if you guys have questions, drop it in the comment. I'll do my best to look over at my other screen and check the comments as we go. But for all of you joining, thank you once again for being here. Um, so this is cool. We already have a question, so I'm going to pause my questions, Nate. I'm going to jump over to the question from chat. User redacted, which says first time chat. Don't know if you've ever been on our Twitch channel before, but hey, user redacted. I don't know who you are because you redacted user, but it is good to have you hanging out with us. So his question is yeah, this. I'll just read it out for those of you watching on YouTube who can't see it. But he said, interested to know how an institution views certs like OSCP. Do you get any credit or kudos at least for having gained the OSCP? What do you think? That's something worth looking into. I have no idea. I... I failed to look at all that stuff. I just signed up for the courses and have been slowly moving through them. Uh, but I know that you can test out of some things. I think the Security Plus might get you out of a couple courses. Uh, but you'd, you'd have to double check that. But otherwise, they just have the standard CLEP exams where you can CLEP out of like Comp 1 and 2, which I wish I would have done now. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, the one part I can speak into, not DSU, but WGU, which is where I got my bachelor's degree from, Western Governors University, uh, same thing. So if you have A plus, Network plus, Security plus, Pen Test plus, OSCP, I know those are all certs that that you can bring in and knock out classes that way. Um, the the question I I've even wrestled with is like, and maybe you can speak to this, Nate. If you have the OSCP, and I know you're taking the P and PT tomorrow, which we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Like, is a bachelor's degree worth it at that point in time from your perspective? Um, it's hard to say, so I think it depends on who's looking at your resume, but I Good point. I recently have heard from a hiring manager, hey, I see you got like one course left, that doesn't matter, you have the OSCP. So it depends, it definitely depends on who you're talking to, I think, um, but if it's an associates versus the OSCP or a bachelor's versus the OSCP, I think the bachelor's might be a little bit you know, more comparable to the OSCP, the, the associates is pretty high level stuff. I think that they're just, they don't care if you have that done. Sure. And you make a good point. It's about who's looking at your resume. And unfortunately the way that HR often works is you have to check certain boxes. And often one of those boxes is a bachelor's degree, especially if it's a management role. Whereas if you already have your foot in a door, like a pen testing company, then I think it's a different story. Then I think a degree doesn't matter, right? Experience, will we'll trump a degree, but if you can get a degree plus experience plus certs, um, maybe you unlock a cheat code at that point in time. I have no idea. I'll find out. Maybe once I get my OSCP, since I have a bachelor's, I'll get a superpower. And if I do, I'll make sure I make a video and let you guys know what that superpower is. But You get like the hacker man gloves all of a sudden just show up on your arms. And... <laughs> yeah, dude, like black hoodies just show up in my closet, and I just always have a black hoodie for each day. That... <laughs> Try to rip one off, and a new one generates. <laughs> just, just shows up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay well just just for context for those watching what is your current full-time position what do you do right now in the world of it um, right now i'm a data analyst so normally uh, we have customers come in that buy our software and they're moving from a different software so it's just moving records from one format to another format between two different databases uh, but that's been kind of slow, so I've been focused on developing some internal tooling process and process improvement, integrating the many different systems we have through Python code. So a little bit of development. 
Very cool. So a lot of scripting type stuff. Do, do you yeah. see ways that some of the scripting has helped you as you've been studying for the OSCP and other red teaming type stuff? Um, definitely. I mean, it's always good to have the the scripting coding background when you go into hacking or OSCP. I mean, you don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to be able to code, but it helps. It definitely helps. And the stuff that I work with is a lot of web request APIs. So it gets me very comfortable. Uh, when I started learning about web app pen testing, I was already pretty comfortable with how the requests are being handled and what the headers are. So uh, yeah, it was good preparation for sure. That's good to hear. And I guess I should, I should define some of our terms. I apologize doing this so late in the, in our interview, but for those of you who maybe are like, what, what is this OSCP thing that these guys are talking about? So it's kind of the gold standard certification for pen testing. It's technically an entry level cert, but pen testing itself is not entry level. So it's not like a security plus. So what the OSCP is, is you get 24 hours and in those 24 hours, you have to hack some machines. So you have three standalone machines, which are a mix between windows and Linux. And then you have an active directory network, which is a domain controller and two machines on there and you get a certain amount of points. So like, for example, the Active Directory Network is if you root the entire thing, uh, you get 40 points. If you only get part of it, you get zero points and you have to get 70 points to pass. And then after that, you get another 24 hours to write a professional penetration testing report showing the exploits you use and how you compromise the different systems. And that is ultimately how you get the OSCP. Now I haven't taken it. I'm scheduled to take it on in December, but Nate, did I describe that accurately? Did I miss anything just in that basic definition? No, that's good. It's perfect. Okay. You nailed it. So with that, uh, Jay, what up Jay? Good to have you on Twitch with us. But Jay asked this question, is OSCP geared at red teaming mostly or purple team? How, how would you answer that as someone who has taken and passed the exam? I have to think a little bit about it. I'm going to have to go with red teaming though. Um, I would say that only because there's not a whole lot of remediation in there. They don't really walk you through remediation if you find it, it minus like uh, kernel exploits or known vulnerabilities where you need to patch it, right? That's pretty obvious. But uh, like the Active Directory attacks, from what I can remember, they don't walk you through which settings to turn off to disable this attack from working. So I would call it more of red teaming. But even then, it's still kind of just, it, it's very capture the flaggy. It, it like makes you a professional hack the box person, kind of, uh, to put it simple, I guess. I don't know. Sure. Sure, and we'll dig more into that as well. And once again, for those of you just joining, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat, and I will do my best to look over the chat and get to your questions as well. Um, okay, let's let's talk about your experience with the OSCP. It's been, is it three or four weeks now since you became Mr. OSCP? Remind me. Maybe you don't, don't even know. know. I don't we'll know. It feels like it's been an eternity. <laughs> let's call it. Know. Let's call it somewhere between three to four weeks. All right. So three to four weeks, you've been officially OSCP certified. How are you feeling? You know, you had this grind. The grind is kind yeah. of done or it's transitioned to a different kind of grind. Just how are you feeling right now about the OSCP in general now that we're a few weeks out from it? So there's a lot of different stuff going on in my life, but honestly, I'm feeling a lot lower right now than I did when I popped the final box. So there's this, this really, really long, for me, it was a whole year build up, you know, even 10 plus years, how long I've known that I wanted to go after the OSCP, but really this past year, actively studying it, this long ramp up of anticipation. And then you pop the last box and it's like, okay, what now? You know, you get your cert and then... You know, the job offers don't start piling in like you imagine they would. Um, <laughs> the NSA and then you're just kind of there. And be like, hey, no. you want to hack, join our APT group and hack other countries? That didn't no, my camera's you. flickering green, but I, I don't think the NSA has contacted me. Who knows? Maybe they're trying to get a hold of me through like, uh, what is that? The click, click, click. Morse code. <laughs> they're using my webcam for Morse code. Who knows? <laughs> they're waiting for you to finish that final class for your degree, and then the NSA will give you a call and... Same oh, way. yeah. Can't be in the NSA without Comp 2, right? Nope. Comp 2 is definitely what they're waiting on. That's interesting, though. So you have this kind of anticipation. You, you pump that last box, and, and it's kind of a, a drop there. How, how have you managed that? Um, I, so take a break, right? Right after finishing the exam and the reporting and 
Um, I guess, so it's not just completely downhill from there. It's like just a constant up and down thing. But sure. after popping the final box, going into the report, it was really just kind of like, okay, cool. This is exciting because I feel like I have enough points to pass. As long as I don't completely jack up my report, I should be good. A lot of anticipation waiting for the email, but then the email comes and no job offers. So it, as far as managing it, just take a break afterwards is what I went with. Um, I took like a couple weeks off and then started focusing on what's the next thing. What's the next way that I can start climbing that hill again, build up that anticipation again and go after something new. And so that's why I ha have PNPT scheduled for tomorrow because it's like that that's more of a pen test, right? I got asked in a job interview one time, have you ever sat through a pen test? Have you ever done a full pen test? The answer is no. But if I finish PNPT, yeah, I've gone from external to domain admin. It wasn't in a professional setting, but it was a simulation and I did it all myself. So that's that, awesome. uh, a little sidetrack there, but yeah, that's how I manage it. It's just distraction, I guess. So here's, here's, here's your path. We got OSCP, PNPT, Comp2. You're saving yeah, exactly. the hardest one for last. <laughs> exactly. Yep. I love the one it. that I've been working on the most too. Well, not comp specifically, but yeah, the degree since 2017. Time to finish I love it. it. I'm gonna jump back over to the chat. What up, J Money? He says I'm uh, I online and BCAC and back. All right. Um, now I understand what you're saying. Good to have you here, J Money. Protocol 418 said this. Did you find any sections notably harder than others? Or sections that stuck in your mind even now that you recommend others should do more research into anything that really surprised you and i'm i know you have to be kind of careful what you say but yeah just general concepts anything that you would like like me you, you know i'm getting ready for the oscp if you had three areas you would say hey here here are the three areas you should really focus on what would those be I think for each person, it's going to be different based on the experience you have previously. So my first attempt, um, I think the reason I failed is because I wasn't comfortable enough with Active Directory. Um, I, I don't know that I can really give a, a perfect silver bullet answer to that question, but obviously, you know, the, the course material covers the topics you need to know. Don't get distracted by the internet. Don't get distracted by other people's cheat sheets. Focus on the course material. Um, you don't have to go through all the labs. I know, like you said, you're going to be skipping the labs, and that's that's totally fine. You don't have to do all the exercises. Like, or yeah, don't do all the exercises if you don't want the extra yeah, credit. The that's fine. That fifteen hundred dollar course. I'll, I'll leave my rant for my other video. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't attach me to that. <laughs> um, I I think just focus on the course material. Look at the different topics that are covered. And then pick out a few weaknesses for yourself and just keep digging at those weaknesses until you can figure it out. And the other, I guess the surprising thing, right? So to answer the question more directly, um, you don't know what's going to be on the exam, right? You can prepare as much as you want to. Uh, you could do all the hack the box, all the try hack me, all the vuln hub. Until you sit down and do the exam, you have no idea what it's going to be like. And just getting a, a view of the exam was helpful for me too, I think. Seeing that it was similar in some ways, different in other ways to the studying that I'd been doing, it really helped me figure out what I needed to study. So maybe that means you need to go into it kind of blind and spend another 400 Did you know that Offsec is giving me money every time I say spend more money? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but it wouldn't surprise me, man. If you feel like you're ready, just go for it. Go into it and maybe you have to retake it. So what? Most people don't pass their first time, but try to get like 50 boxes before you do it. That's an interesting t statistic. Um, offensive security has a little chart. They say people that complete more than 50 practice boxes before the exam are like 50% more likely to pass or something like that. The, the number is, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to pull up the chart sometime. I should have had that ready, but. Sure. That's good. And for those of you kind of on this journey, um, I'm fresh on the journey. So I just started my lab time. I think about a week ago was when I officially started my lab time before that I was doing hack the box, like the OSCP recommended machines on hack the box. But uh, I, I tried going through the course and I, I made a personal decision that I'm going to take my chances if I risking the not getting 10 points. Now, if I score a 60 on the exam, 
I might regret my decision. But what I've noticed is jumping straight into some of the labs, just because I have a little bit of experience before that, I, I've learned a lot already going through their network, the Pen 200 network that is attached to it. I made another video, if you guys go back on my YouTube page, walking through it. I was very confused on it until I talked to Nate and he helped me out with it, but it is really helpful. So if you have that lab time, make sure you use it. And if you're limited on that time, I would just encourage you jump into the labs and learn by doing and stumbling through and looking up some things on the offensive security forum. If you get stuck or pinging people on discord, I have noticed kudos to offensive security. They've built a good community of students, I think around it, who are willing to help each other out. Uh, I'm going to glance over at comments. <clears throat> Jay Money's asking what's next for you. And we'll, we'll talk about what's next for him in just a little bit. Jay Money, we'll go into more detail about that. Um, I'm just curious, Nate, here's what's unique about your journey. So other people get like A plus, network plus, security plus, kind of the CompTIA trifecta, maybe pen test plus, some of those other certs. You like, like you didn't get a degree. Literally the first thing you did officially was the OSCP. Why did you make that decision a year ago to say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to get it. I'm going to pursue it. I'm not too sure what made me do it a year ago, but I've known that I've wanted the cert ever since, uh, gosh, I just looked this up the other day. I think it was 2014 or 2013. Um, I was dabbling in Wi-Fi hacking. So it was the first time that I ever downloaded Kali, which back then was Backtrack. So I downloaded Backtrack 5R3, put it on a CD, booted it live on this old laptop I had. Like a legit CD? Not a flash Yeah, oh yeah. Legit CD? No, Love it was CD. Yeah, it was CD. And uh, I, I can't remember if it was CD or DVD. It might have had to be a DVD, but it, it was a disc either way, you know. Yeah. And once I got on there... I was following this guide, right? I was following the null byte how to, um, how to hack Wi-Fi, and he walks you through using the different tools and stuff. But as I was doing that, I noticed this huge set of tools, just different. They're categorized, and so you can kind of tell what the tools do, but you have no idea how to operate them. So I knew that this operating system was super powerful, um, but I didn't think much of it. And then I kept seeing this OSCP mentioned over and over. Anytime I'd be looking at guides, like, unless you're going to go get the OSCP. So I'm like, what is this? I dig into it. Okay, the same people that make this operating system are making a course that you could be certified in this operating system is essentially how I saw it. And that was the moment that I knew I wanted to do this someday. So it's not like I just said, hey, one day I woke up, want to be a hacker, I'm going to do the OSCP. Like, I've wanted to do this for a long time. And I'm kind of doing stuff out of order. I, I probably should have a couple of certs, but I didn't make the best decisions. Like finishing up networking one, two, and then routing and switching. That primes you for like CCNA. I should have went out and got CCNA after that. But I didn't. So OSCP is the first one. I love it. That's so cool. And like I shared before, one of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel is Lessons from Failing the OSCP. And I've been really reflecting on that as I've started the lab time, knowing that there's a real possibility on December 8th, I, I may not pass and, and figuring out like, what does that look like moving forward? And like, personally, my issue is, um, I get probably frustrated too easily. And then the mantra of try harder just makes me want to throw my computer across the room. And I can just imagine on the OSCP, I'm going to get stuck and get mad. And if I do get in a, in a place where I fail, I'm going to be very angry, very upset. How did you handle that? You spent all this time prepping for it and then you failed. What, what were those thoughts going through your mind right away? As soon as you realize I'm not going to pass, walk us through those, those, those first couple of moments after you had that realization, how did you handle that? I was really defeated at first. So there was probably, I, I want to say six or eight hours left when I realized, Hey, I'm, I'm nowhere near the end here, um, as far as points, but we're getting pretty close to the end and I haven't slept yet. So my brain is gunk and I don't have many points. Um, I've tried everything I can think of trying. And that's the worst part when you run out of ideas before oh, you run out of time. It's horrible. So I felt extremely defeated. I uh, took like the night off. I didn't even write the report because I didn't have enough points. Um, and then I just, 
did what I always do when I'm resting. I lay on the couch, pulled up YouTube, and looked up what was on my mind to like expand my thoughts. And I found this JSON sec. I think that's how you pronounce it, JSON sec. It's like JSON, like job, JavaScript object notation. But I think his name's actually Jason. But anyways, well, found this video. Guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I found his video, something about uh, what to do after failing. And it, mm-hmm. it was like one of those pull your head out of the ground and try again type things. But it kind of helped me relax from it. And then I started remembering as I was scheduling my first attempt, I felt like I wasn't quite ready, but I wasn't sure if I was just, you know, they, they say you'll never feel ready until you pass. I wasn't sure if it was that. It's like having kids. Right. Right. And I, I, well, I wasn't sure if it was that or if I actually just was aware of where I was at and knew that I wasn't quite ready yet. But so that was kind of a confirmation. And I looked back and I thought, no, you already knew that you weren't ready. So use this as an opportunity to figure out your weaknesses. I mean, you just got a good look at the exam. Either way, you're going to have to pay for it again. Like, no giving up. That was not an option. Giving up was not an option for me. Uh, I dropped out of high school and that primed me to not quit at anything ever again because it's one of the biggest regrets of my life it's it's one year of school but you never get that back i mean you'll be on your deathbed wondering what if i what if i would have stuck to it what if i would have finished you know sure yeah that's a good point and just for those of you watching the the practical side of it when i first read about the oscp and saw the price tag it's right around fifteen hundred dollars i initially thought if you failed you had to pay another $1,500 to, to retake the exam. And I was like, man, that's insane. But I believe it's only like the retake voucher is what, $250 or something along those lines. Do you know? Am I uh, it could be. I've been saying 400, but it might be that low. I, I have a tendency to overinflate the amount of money I'm spending on stuff. So it's just confusing. Cause then if you buy lab time and stuff or extend lab time, you know, then you're putting out more money. I think just to buy a voucher, it's 250, maybe $300, but Still, if you've already dropped the $1,500 on it um, to take a few more attempts, and I think it's a good point as well, just recognizing what you said before. I don't believe OFSEC releases uh, like percentages of people who pass the first time, but it seems like the general feeling and standard is when you read on Reddit and other places, like most people do not pass in their first attempt. Um, that's either encouraging or discouraging, I guess, depend, <laughs> depending on the person and, and, and what your, your personality is. So you, you failed it. Um, do you have a rough idea of how much time went by from when you failed the exam to when you took it the second time and passed? I was trying to think about how much time went by. I think the first attempt was in May. So that would put us at, I don't know, four, three, four months, something like that. I don't know. My math is horrible, especially live math. It's, I'm a calculator kind of guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. So we have, we have that first attempt. You were not feeling confident. You failed your second attempt. Uh, I didn't even know you were doing it. We were actually camping, right? Like our families were camping together. And you're like, yeah, I'm leaving early to go start the OSCP. I was like, what? Like you're, you're jumping into it. How, how are you feeling before that, that second attempt? Were you feeling confident? Were you feeling nervous? Like what, what were your feelings? I mean, you were camping. So that was unique that you went camping yeah. right before you, you dove into it. But how were you feeling before that second attempt? Um, so actually the camping was nice cause I, I felt prepared and I just, I knew that I needed to take a break and really regain all the juices in my brain. So it was really nice to be camping, uh, right before the exam, but I, I definitely felt prepared. I felt like I had identified my weaknesses. I had improved upon them. There was still a chance that I was going to fail, but it was a lot less of a chance than the first time around. And so I, I went at it again and I, I was fully ready to to fork over another 250 or whatever if I did fail. But I just, I figured, why wait? Like, now I know that I'm just pushing it off. Now I know I'm ready. I feel like I'm ready. It's not the thing where I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have kids yet because I'm not ready. It's not that anymore. Now it's just me pushing it off. So I just kind of jumped the gun and one day, that's exactly what I did with PNPT too. Just one day I, I grabbed my card and pulled up the website. Like, oh yeah, I'll just buy this real quick and schedule it for this weekend, you know? Sure. Um yeah, I felt much more prepared. Very cool. I'm going to jump over to Twitch. We have a couple of questions on Twitch, so we will hit those. Uh, user Redacted said, what do you attribute success to second time around? What did you do differently between attempts? Any suggestion on practical steps to take to improve chances of success? So kind of three different questions, but a general idea. 
How would you answer those questions? I'm just going to babble a bunch. And if I miss any of the questions, let me know. Um, okay. One of the weaknesses I identified was that I was constantly using online cheat sheets. So hack tricks is great. I love hack tricks, but if you don't find what you're looking for on there, you might end up on a different site and then a different site and then a different site that's sifting through a lot of repeated content. And there's a chance that you're missing something that, you know, that might be the right answer, but you're skipping over it because, oh, this is all the same as the last site. So what I, what I did to fix that is really revise my notes, made my cheat sheet work for me. And then there were a few times where I had to go on hack tricks or something else to look for like an idea or syntax for something. But for the most part, the second attempt, I was able to do it all from my notes. The Let next me thing. You. Let me pause yep. you right there. I'm going to pause you mid thought because I wanted to see your notes. I know that's a question we yeah. had in the past. So because you brought up your notes. Yeah. Are you good sharing them with us? I mean, not your OSCP notes, obviously, but your general hacking notes. Do you mind sharing yeah. like your screen and just showing us an overview of how you take your notes and how you organize some of those things? Definitely. I just, uh, I don't know what's going on with the screen share dialogue for Discord. It normally doesn't look like that. Make sure I click the right button. Share your screen. Well, I'll just watch you. Okay, Obviously. sweet. Oh, they're trying to get me to buy nitro. That's what's going on. Can you see this? Yeah. Let me make it big on my end. Sure. And let me make it. I think I can make hide members go away. There we go. It's completely full screen on my end. It's full screen on, on Twitch. So, yep, we can all see it good. Cool. So for the most part, these notes are uh, kind of what helped me get through the OSCP. There's a few additions that I added recently for PNPT, but the first time around, I just had my notes uh, and write-ups. And my notes, as I was going through the course material, was very... Uh, it was organized in the same way. Like, you could look at the table of contents of the course material, and it would look just like over here. That's how I had it organized. It was chronological based on how the course material is presented. And that... There was a lot of writing. Um, it was very clunky scatterbrained and just kind of all over the place so what i did to improve that is tried to put things um, somewhere that made more sense i guess and then cut out the theory uh, the theory is good it's important to know but when you're looking for a cheat sheet or a run list you just want commands right you you need to know what situation you're in what you can do from that situation and what command will help you do that right it's like so recipes. that's what I you ever notice yeah, that when yeah. you look up a recipe online they spend freaking the first part of the page talking about the story of making these cookies with their grandkids like I don't care I what complain cookies about you that just get all the get time. to the dang yep. recipe yeah I, yeah I just yep. popped in my head though oh man yeah I, I complain to my wife about that all the time like oh yeah Trust you got to read about Becky's past before you can get the cookies but um so this is like the best example I think the Active Directory section is probably the best thing I did when I refactored my notes. So I put it all together, right? It's all in one thing, which that's how it was before because it's all in the same chapter. But I did this here where um, it's, I don't know how to describe it because I haven't had to describe it yet, but each one of these is a level of access that I have. And then everything in that note is what I can do with that access. So if I don't have any access, I don't know users or passwords or anything, this is where I start. This is what you can do with no usernames, no passwords. Um, and this is specific, you know, this is stuff that I learned in the course material. I didn't put a ton of stuff on here that was from a different website. Uh, Try Hack Me, for example, great content, but it's the AD stuff is much deeper than what they go on the OSCP, at least in my experience. So I try to keep this within the scope of what's covered in the course material. That way you can kind of say, oh, this is what they taught me. So this is probably what they want me to use. Uh, but then let's say you get some usernames. Well, here's some commands you can do with usernames. Here's some commands you can do if you get credentials. And that was, um, I'm, I'm proud of that. I can't say that it was the most useful. I don't think I use this very much, to be honest, in the exam. But just stuff like that, organizing it like that, having all my privilege escalation sorted out there's no more duplicates 
And then I went through all my write-ups and uh, found techniques in my write-ups that I didn't have in my notes and then put mm. them in my notes in an organized way. And just really refining. Yeah, yeah. Ref refining, I think, is the key word here. So just refine your notes, refine your write-ups into your notes, and just keep refining your notes until you're absolutely comfortable with them and they have everything you need. Mm. Man, my, my wheels are turning in my own head. I think of my own notes. Uh, they're okay, but they're definitely scatterbrained in some ways. I don't even think about, like, I do I do catch a lot of stuff when I'm doing a box, and I don't go back and, and throw those in my notes. And then I, I always remember when I have a box that's similar, I'm, like, control effing through my notes trying to remember what was that, that right up. I used or how did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. excellent. I'm going to do that before the exam. That's good. That's okay. a good idea. I'm going to, so jumping back to those questions, I totally interrupted you mid thought right there. But once again, it was, it was asking, what do you, what did you do differently? What do you attribute your success to the second time? The first thing you shared is, uh, rather than Googling everything, you made your notes a lot cleaner, a lot more compiled. W what else were you going to get to? Yeah. So this other one, the second thing, um, if you are in the discord meetings, the Monday meetings at all, you've heard me say this a couple of times. I just needed to get more reps in. So I completed probably 20 or 30 capture the flags with write-ups before going into the first attempt. And I got about 30 points. Um, well, less than that. We figured out the other day I had officially 20 points, right? Um, I think I was at 70 by the second attempt. And so just the... the That's awesome. Uh, yeah, the reps. Repetition. And I don't think I have a third one. Was there a third question? No, I think I just asked for three things, but you don't need you don't need to add a three a third one. There, just there might be there. another one. I'll uh, I'll circle back to that because I did have a list of things. So that was the other thing. If you fail an attempt, um, do like a post part post after somebody dies and they examine the body. <laughs> do that. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After you die, taking the exam, examine your body and see what you could exactly. Done. So yeah, that's. I mean, I went through. You know, I looked at how many boxes that I have that were Windows, how many did I have that were Linux, and then where did I get the flags? Where are my weaknesses? Really do an, an analysis of why you failed and then come up with an action plan, execute the action plan, and then you'll be much more prepared for the second time around. That's so good. And I, I hope what you guys are noticing while you're watching this is it's awesome to succeed, right? It's awesome to pass everything on your first attempt. But man, I, I think you learn a lot more when you fail and you come face to face with your own failure and you put the steps in place. I think Nate, you'd probably agree to this. If you would have passed on the first time, man, awesome. Like celebrate it. You had 20 points. If you would have gotten the AD, you know, that puts you at 60 points. If you submitted a lab report, you were at 70 points. You could have passed even with those 20 points if you got the AD chain. Um, but I'm guessing you learned a lot more by failing and working on your weaknesses. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And if I would have, uh, somehow weaseled my way through the AD set the first time around. I was not ready. I was cramming AD for, I think, a week or two before the first attempt. That's not long enough. You got to be familiar with it. Sure. That's good. Yeah, postmortem. I said I said postpartum, didn't I? That's like after you have a baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, though, too, is postpartum for some reason. After you have yeah. a baby and you get depressed. Oh, well. Uh, Jay said postmortem. Thank you, Jay, for correcting our <laughs> terrible uh, vocabulary while we're while we're here on stream. Now I'm gonna um, fail comp too because I'm. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Maybe I'll learn more by failing comp too. You'll there be you fine. Go. Form that action plan and and come back to it. Another question from Protocol Four One Eight. Actually, before I get to your question. Sorry, I have so many thoughts going on in my head. Uh, Nate mentioned a Discord channel. And if you're just stumbling across this video, you don't know what that is. Let me share real briefly. And for those of you joining on Twitch, I know I have people in our Twitch from Discord. I don't have a good way to share the link because I'm talking right now. But for those of you who are part of our Discord, if you can drop an invite link in the chat, I would very much appreciate it. But uh, about a year ago, when Nate started this journey, we said, hey, let's let's get together once a week and let's hold one another accountable. It was just going to be me and Nate. And I said, hey, let's let's open this up to more people and see if anyone wants to join us. And it started out pretty slow. We just had a Facebook group chat put together and we would jump on calls on Zoom once a week. And sometimes there would just be like two of us. 
Well, eventually a guy named Jack Neely joined that Facebook group and he said, hey, let's turn this into a Discord server. And now I think we are hitting about 600 people in that Discord server, but we've kind of kept to how it started. We meet once a week to hold one another accountable, to share learning goals, to encourage one another. So if you are looking for a group of people to encourage you and be on this journey with you, join us on Discord. Um, hopefully someone will drop a link in the chat. If no one drops a link, if you just look for Work Smarter Discord, you'll be able to find it. There we go. Jack Neely dropped it. Thank you, Jack. So Jack just dropped it on the Twitch channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the description of this page. So go ahead and join. Tell them Tyler and Nate sent you uh, because then we get a bonus in our paycheck from Work Smarter. We make no money from it. Uh, we don't we don't charge you anything. It really is just a community to encourage you. Okay. Jumping back to the chat, Protocol 418 said, what sort of feedback do you get after the exam to understand what you need to work on? Um, Nothing. Just I your don't. own notes. Yeah, so, they don't tell you anything. Even if you pass, they don't tell you how many points you passed with. They just tell you pass-fail. So um, no feedback other than what you can observe. So you have That's to be rough. very observant. Yeah. That is rough. Okay, I'm going to keep going through the questions here. Jay said, did you find yourself going deep into the woods more in the first or second attempt? Definitely the first attempt on the AD stuff, uh, because I wasn't familiar with it. And I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was. So I ended up with that. Uh, there's this huge mind map of AD attacks. And I think it was that one you shared with me the other day, Tyler. Uh I ended up trying like every attack on there, even though I didn't have the the prerequisite uh, state. Like you have to have credentials for some of the attacks. Just, I'm just like throwing, throwing attacks hashes, at it. Just just type oh, yeah. hash and th <laughs> just a hash just throwing online. attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just it was kind of uh, like I, I was trying to brute force the attack. So um, yeah, definitely deeper into the woods the first time around, but that. I think doing that helped me organize my notes better and really stick to the course material. Um, you may run into a few things on the exam, and I've heard this from other people. You'll see some things on the exam that aren't specifically covered, but the concept is covered. So as long sure. as you don't let your notes stray too far, you should be good. That's good. And we've, I'm, I'm looking over at my questions, kind of those on chat have hit a lot of my questions. I still have a handful to run through, but we are nearing, we're at the 47 minute mark. So just for those of you watching, we're going to try to start wrapping things up soon, but I do want to prioritize your guys' questions over mine. So once again, if you guys have more questions, keep posting them in chat. I'll keep checking chat to make sure I get to them. But Nate, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just burnout and You've been grinding this thing out for the past year. You're grinding out another cert, which if we have time, we'll talk more about the PNPT as well. But how have you handled burnout through this? How have you stayed uh, physically, mentally, emotionally healthy? How have you prioritized your wife and kids? Like what, what disciplines have you had in place in the past year to do those things? I did a, a small stint of going to the gym. And that was like an attempt to try to get my family as a whole more active. Uh, we spend a lot of time in front of the TV. So I was trying to move away from that. But that helped a lot. Uh, that was when I was really starting to ramp up the studying. Just go into the gym to clear my mind for a couple hours. Sometimes I'd leave them here and just run to the gym, hit the treadmill for a while. And, uh, you know, maybe throw up like an IPSEC video or something and watch some technique while I'm pedaling away or running away. But... I, I don't do the best, to be honest. Like, I do get burnt out, and then I just take time off until I feel better or find something different to do until I feel better. But sometimes I just, uh, I'm not really burnt out as much as I'm just kind of tired of doing this. And that's what sure. I think they mean when they say try harder. It's like, you're tired of doing this? Okay, well, uh, get over it and get it done with. And but But don't burn yourself out. Like, don't grind yourself down to the bone or anything like that. But just because you don't feel like doing it at this point in time, like that's not a good reason not to do it. So I, I didn't manage it the greatest, I guess, to answer the question. Uh, I, I just kind of struggled through it and did my best. Sure, that's good. I had a, a boxing coach uh, when I, I used to box a lot more often than I do now, but he always said, if you can't fight tired, 
you can't win fights, which is kind of a cheesy saying, but it was like the mantra of the gym. But it's true in the boxing ring. Like everybody thinks I'll get in the boxing ring. You're like, I know how to fight. And it's like, dude, after 30 seconds, you're, you're huffing and puffing. You're getting hit in the face a bunch of times. Right. So it's, it's not that you prevent yourself from getting tired when you box. It's just that when you're tired, you develop such good technique that even though you're exhausted, your hands are up and you can still throw a punch. If you can't fight tired, you can't win fights. I think that is in some ways the boxing version of try harder. Um, I can just imagine the OSCP, even when I'm working through a box and I get frustrated, there's that breaking point. You gotta, you gotta push yourself past that breaking point and remain calm. Uh, maybe step away for a little bit, but those are all, those are all good points. And, and, yeah, well, and like you, you said, yeah, go ahead. Like you said in a, I think you said this in one of your recent videos that you just get so mad. I think it was the one about the OSCP lab. Um, yeah, yeah. When I had that face, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took that in my yeah. bathroom and edited out the background. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's a pretty funny picture. Um, uh oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my, oh, it's all good. Face. Yeah, when It'll you get frustrated, later. when you get really mad, right? Do something else. I think it's, it was the oh, gist yeah. of that video. Like, go. I, I played yep. tag with my kids outside at a, at a park, and that was huge. I came back and fresh mind and was able to knock out a box, if I remember right. Yeah, because you're completely unproductive in that state of mind. You you just can't think what, if you're – is it the medubla oblongata? <laughs> when you get angry, it starts getting more active, and you just I couldn't remember you can't think logically. So now you're going into, like, brain science. Let's – Let's start talking about neuroscience. Um, <laughs> it's going to turn to a Joe Rogan podcast pretty soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. The Joe Rogan experience. Oh, man. On on the note of uh, on burnout, just the one thing I want to encourage you guys with, if you are studying for the OSCP or any other certification, one thing I try to remind myself in, in many areas of life is uh, your identity does not come from what you do or what you accomplish. And I think if we get that twisted, if we begin to find our identity and our success at our job or our identity in the amount of search we gained or our identity in passing the OSCP, that is a recipe not just for burnout, but for true uh, depression and then depression leading to self-medication. So we just encourage you guys to make sure you have a solid understanding of your own identity. And I would also say therapy is good. I've done uh, therapy myself personally when I was going. I've done therapy a couple of uh, seasons in my life, but just know that if you are in a place feeling depressed or uh, even self-medicating in, in some form or fashion, uh, try harder is not the mantra to follow, right? If you are in that place, don't try harder, right? Get professional help. Uh, it's healthy to get professional help. So I always just wanna, anytime I talk about mental health, I just wanna throw that out. If you are struggling with that, there are professionals out there. I am not the professional. Nate's not the professional. So take our advice with a grain of salt. Um, but therapy is good. If you are in that place, don't just try harder in that world. All right. Looking over at the comments, Hunterbot said, Nate, your camera quality is great. So good job. <laughs> That's funny. I'm using the, uh, the light mode of Obsidian. I usually use dark mode, but I switched it to light mode, so I'd have oh, some. Oh, that's the light on your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I have a yeah. tiny little light I bought off for like twenty dollars off Amazon. That's like a little thing that I can control it. That's what I use oh, nice. for all my lighting. But let's let's talk. How are we doing on time? Fifty three minutes. Um, who cares? We'll we'll keep going because yeah. I want to talk about the PNPT certification. So you are taking that thing tomorrow. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, and maybe Nate already took it because it, I usually update it a little bit later. I'm going to pause right here. Someone said, is the stream laggy for anyone else? If it is laggy for you guys, let me know. I'm watching the stream and everything looks smooth. So Oreo bite might just be you. But if it is laggy, someone, someone drop a comment, let us know. But let's talk about the PNPT certification. And let's just answer the question. It's not as well known as the OSAP. So what the heck are you going to attempt tomorrow? What is the PNPT certification? Yeah, so from my understanding, it's five days of a simulated penetration test and then two days of reporting and then a 15 minute debrief, uh, which is like a live debrief you have to speak on. So I'm, I'm kind of nervous about that part, but otherwise I'm pretty excited. So they drop you, uh, you know, starting in the external portion, you have to try to somehow get into the network and then escalate to domain admin. So it's kind of a, I don't know if you'd call it a full scope network pen test, but you're starting at the outside 
and getting all the way in and as to where OSCP is like, here's a box, here's the IP, good luck, and here's another box, here's another IP. They're not really related, but the PNPT is like a more like a real pen test, I think. That's very cool. And I will, uh, you know, I haven't taken the OSCP. I hope to also get the PNPT afterwards. I'm basically just following in your steps and seeing what happens. And then I learn from, from whatever you do. I try to <laughs> internalize the lesson. So you're my, you're a guinea pig for me. So I appreciate that. But what you're I welcome. like about the PNPT, <laughs> uh, the OSCP is big, right? It has name recognition. The PNPT seems in my opinion to be more realistic and in some ways more helpful you got you guys kind of heard you got you got five days you don't have 24 hours much more realistic to a real exam you got two days to write the report your debrief is with uh, all senior pen testers if my memory serves me correct when i was looking at the exam they have incredible training not just a uh, huge pdf there's actually video courses that walk you through things step by step the courses are excellent extremely affordable the cert itself is extremely affordable especially compared to the oscp and i believe if you fail they actually provide feedback on areas of weakness that you should improve on. Is is that all accurate? Do I have my details correct? Yeah, I'm not sure if you said this. I might have missed it, but they also give you a free retake with the uh, with oh, purchase. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I'm pumped about that. So, but yeah, you nailed all the main points. I think other than that. And why did you decide to pursue that now? I mean, you haven't taken much time off. You passed the OSCP. And you're kind of jumping right into the PNPT. Why did you not take more time off to play Grand Theft Auto V role play? <laughs> because then that's what I'll do the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> I get I get really sucked into games, so I try to avoid them as much as possible. Um, so one part of it is battling the downward spiral after passing the OSCP or that that negative feeling of like i'm not really working for anything anymore like obviously i need to take a break and it's okay to feel just like i'm not doing anything right now i'm just hanging out watching tv and showing up to meetings and i i was exploring like java and stuff like that but eventually i had realized okay i've calmed down enough from the excitement of the OSCP. I really need to start going after the next thing and so that I don't get complacent, right? That's one of the biggest sure. things that you need to avoid is getting complacent in offensive mm -hmm. security because then you start falling behind, you're not relevant, you're worthless, right? So I wanted to get that, keep that momentum kind of. Um, and I don't know, the experience for me, like I being asked the question really hit me when they're like, Hey, have you ever done a pen test before? Well, no, I haven't. That's a good point. Like, how can I do that in a simulated way or something? So PNPT I'm doing mostly uh, because of the practicality of it. First of all, right. If I want to be a pen tester or red teamer, it's going to be good preparation for a job. It's going to be good preparation for interviews. I really enjoy the training. I, I really, really enjoy it. It feels like I'm being trained by a coworker to do my job versus learning some things that I've never learned before, you know, and maybe that's because I did the OSCP first. I don't know, but, um, hopefully that answers the question. It does. It does. And I just have a couple more questions then we'll, we'll sign off. And people said there was frame drops, but it's working now. So hopefully everything's good for you guys. If it's not, uh, quit DDoSing us and, uh, we'll, we'll start doing better in that way. It's but probably John you, Hammond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's jealous because he's he the hasn't done the drone us. hacking yeah. video yet. Sorry, John. If you <laughs> if you want to be featured on my Twitch channel again, we can talk about drone hacking. Quit quit denouncing oh, us from. Uh, he's at a conference, I think, speaking right now with with Kevtech. They're they're both. Oh, that's cool. Denouncing us while they watch us. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, very cool. But okay, sipping beers, D Dawson. <laughs> eating pizza kept oh yes pizza i interviewed him and like as soon as we get get into he's like sorry i'm just finishing up this piece of pizza did he has this pizza sitting on the desk is chowing down right before <laughs> interview oh weird i saw part of that interview i didn't see the pizza though so i don't think i had it in the it was like before we started like when we just jumped oh, in the discord okay. before we started talking he's like finishing up his pizza pizza oh man i was cracking up but as we talk about the oscp or the pnpt which are the two certs we could talk about more, but I think those are big certs and they're hands-on as opposed to some of the certs I have like pen test is supposedly a pen testing cert. I knew nothing about pen testing when I took it and I was able to pass it because I'm good at taking tests. Doesn't mean I actually know how to, how to do a pen test. But as you look at those certs and you make that plan, just what is your process of looking at the cert, you made the decision, 
How do you form that initial attack plan for studying? Do you have any processes in place for that? Um, with the OSCP, I had kind of just explored things that I was interested in before that. And then I kind of had to fill in the gaps of, okay, what haven't I explored yet? So the very first thing I would say is look at what's covered in the course, right? What are the topics that are covered? And start studying those. You know, you can build a pretty solid plan just looking at the table of contents if you can get your hands on it. Uh, but then, of course, purchase the course material and go through the course material. I mean, they kind of they kind of set up the study plan for you, um, and you're just responsible for retaining the knowledge. You're responsible for repeating it so much that you can feel comfortable doing it in an exam in a, a tight time window. So. I don't think I have like any secret sauce for coming up with a way to complete a course, but definitely move strategically. Don't just jump around the course material. Um, if you start getting bored of the topic, maybe do two topics in parallel so you can go back and forth between them. But That's that true. can get messy too, because you might, st if they're similar enough, you might start confusing things, but yeah, just follow the course material, I guess. That's good. And I like the whole idea of looking at the, right, the syllabus or the syllabi might be the proper terminology, but I'm screwing up vocab, so probably not. Um, but looking at Neuroscience, that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Asking yourself the question, you know, am I, am I strong? Am I weak in that area? And I believe the OSCP, obviously the, the PDF is not publicly available, but the curriculum itself or the, the outline of the topics that are in the PDF is available on the OFSEC website. So if you're interested mm -hmm. in the OSCP, that's something you could do is look at that and the P and PT, I mean, they're, they're super open about their material and what is online and the courses are like 20. I mean, the courses were just on sale for a dollar. Like you get all their courses for $1. I don't believe offensive security has ever gone on sale for $1, but uh, they did for all their courses at TCM security. So they're also really open and you can, review that and figure out what are my strong areas? What are my weak areas? What do I need to work on? What boxes should I try to knock out? Um, I'm looking over at, Oh, just a second. Don't start that question yet. I want to go back to the yeah, last question you just asked about, Please. um, a study plan. So with the OSCP specifically, there's a great guide online. Uh, and you can kind of pick if you're a little bit experienced or if you're a lot experienced, there are spots where you can pick up and just kind of run with prep. Um, I think the guy is TJ Null. So there's this, I can't, is it definitive guide to pass the OSCP or something like that? But I, I can share the link with you and you should put it in the comment of the video or the description of the video. Sure. Because really, when I was first starting to actively study, I followed that thing like it was, I don't know, the rules, the laws. You know, I, I followed it to the T. and. Sure. I think that was pretty beneficial. Good to know. But, yeah, if you send me that link, yeah. I'll drop it. I yeah, I didn't want to leave this. that out. He has like a trophy or something. I don't know if it's like a trophy spreadsheet where he has some of those machines as well. I should look at his actual guide. <clears throat> Would be helpful. Um, looks like some people might be having issues with the video. So if you guys are having issues, I mean, I'm looking at it. It seems smooth. Um, but I will post the recording on my YouTube page. So just know if it seems buggy for you, it will be on my YouTube page. Although I'm pulling the recording from Twitch because it doesn't allow me to go on Discord and stream on Twitch and record on OBS without breaking. So hopefully that the actual Twitch recording is solid, but I'll, I'll make it work. We'll figure it out. Looking over the questions, we are going to wrap up. We are at the one hour mark. Um, I'm looking up. Oh, it's just people complaining about the quality. No other questions. Okay. <laughs> easy enough well, hey Nate. that many people <laughs> it must be bad it's a handful it's weird i do kind of see it pausing i don't know why um i'm just gonna blame nate for it i mean i did have Which a pretty bad sense. run of streams there for a while where it was I'm just the one choppy I'm, at, I'm actually looking at obs right now oh i'm getting like drop frames this is this is weird yeah like my uh my network connection is is breaking, but I don't know why. I'm pretty sure John Hammond is DDoSing me. I've never had this happen before. I'm I'm so famous now that people are coming after me. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Oh. 
Oh, man. Okay, so we had another question about the new exam stuff and human Twitch. If you're watching this, I'll, I'll come out the video to answer that. You can actually, if you go to my YouTube page, I did provide some thoughts on, on some of the OSCP type stuff, and we can even make a part two where Nate has a YouTube page too that he needs to learn how to update. So maybe he could answer some of these OSCP questions on his YouTube you page have, once he... Do you have a good flow? How do you uh, produce your videos? We're, we're turning this around. I'm going to interview you now as a content creator. How do you go from a recording to posting it to YouTube. What does that flow look like for you? Obviously with a bad internet connection, I don't know what's going on right now, but um, I, so I, re when I, usually when I'm just streaming on Twitch, right, I record it locally with OBS just because it's better quality than when I download it from Twitch. And then I just have a general format. So like, if you look at my YouTube videos, I have a standard naming convention. And then in my description, I try to just make bullet points of everything I cover in that video. And then uh, for thumbnails, I don't make that cool. My only unique thumbnail is my one for the, <laughs> the obvious frustration one, but I use, uh, is it remove.bg that just removes the background from your photos. If you have a, a decent colored backdrop behind you. And then I literally make my thumbnails in PowerPoint, right? So like for hack the box, I'll take the hack the box room, Google image, put it as a PowerPoint slide. And then my face without the background on the PowerPoint slide. And that's how I make my thumbnails. But my, my biggest thing is I don't spend a whole lot of time on video editing at all. I just stream it on Twitch, then post it on YouTube. But the one thing I have done in the past is I'll take my longer Twitch stream. I will post the whole stream, but if there's a section of like working with AD Bloodhound, then I'll cut that out with my very fancy Windows video editor and then make like a, a three or four minute tutorial on AD Bloodhound from that bigger stream. But I think the biggest thing about YouTube is having content consistently being released and because i was streaming three days a week and then also doing an interview i mean i had videos coming out four to five days a week so it was just like the consistency that i think has helped build up um somewhat of an audience but i'm still obviously a noob like i think i'm at i don't know 900 subscribers or something so i'm not uh john hammond or, or kev tech or anyone like that how are you doing it are you doing it similar or what's your process uh, so I record with OBS, and it's a local OBS file, which is not uploadable to YouTube. Um, I have to convert it in OBS, and then usually I have Wait, issues on the screen. That. I was looking at the chat. What do you do with the, with the format? I looked at the chat, then I heard you say it's not convertible to YouTube. What are you putting it in? Um, I'll have to open OBS. Hopefully it doesn't crash. So when you record with oh, OBS... Oh, I don't even have OBS can't... yet. You can't put um, it into YouTube after you record it with OBS? You're recording in some weird format? Yeah, isn't it? I can't remember what the format is. Give me a, a second. Yeah, I'm sure you can I'll be change able to find that. It. I do remember having that issue. You you can just update the MP4. What? Yeah, you can just you just up. I don't remember where it's at, but I I did that a long time ago when I was doing podcasts. You just have to go into like the output settings and change it to MP4, and then it's right away outputs an MP4. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to convert it. Oh man, yeah. Because I so my flow so far, the reason that my content is piled up, I have so much recorded stuff that I haven't posted, and it's because usually on stream I'll have issues, so I have to kill and restart. So then my my full stream is multiple clips, so I have to go through, convert each file, and then put them back together in the Windows Video Editor, and then I usually spend some time like cutting out dumb stuff I did during the stream, trying to cut out breaks. Um, I like the fact that you say you try to minimize editing because I should probably do, yeah, minimize editing, yeah. I think would be a huge time saver for me. Um, but then I, I end up getting stuck on um, just, it's so much work that I just don't want to start. So I'll get a video uploading and then I should probably work on another one, but I just walk away because I'm so, I just don't want to keep doing it, I guess. It's, it's too clunky of a process for me to want to keep doing it over and over again. So yeah, that's, that's why I was asking backlog. about your process. I have yeah, no backlog, yeah. right? I do the videos right away. So as soon as we're done with this, I'll start uploading to YouTube now. And, but then like, even if it's uploaded, I always schedule it because if you upload it and make it available right away, if people watch it right away, it plays in terrible like quality. But if you schedule it, really? so the H, so the HD can buffer first. So schedule it sure. out like 12 hours from when you upload it, then when it, when it's actually available, it's in full HD and it looks better. And then on the editing side of it, the only thing I edit is I record a little bit of the five minute countdown in the beginning. And I just edit that down to like three seconds or zero seconds, just so it dives into the video right away. But I don't edit like the dumb parts or when I make mistakes, because I think what sets 
at, at least our type of content apart from others is you you watch like uh um ipsec if that's how you say it and he has really good videos really good walkthroughs but for the most part he has some that that are live but for the most part it's clearly walkthroughs like people figure out the box then they make a 20 minute video walking through how to do it you don't see their methodology you don't see them when they make mistakes whereas when you watch more of a long form video like like something we make people can follow along do the box to follow along with the methodology and um i've learned a lot by following people who just stream live like that because you can see their methodology and you like what do they do when they make mistakes i like that with john hammond too when he streams live and you see him actually get stuck and then i realize dude's actually a human being right and right, then following right. his well then he writes like some fancy python script to fix stuff i'm like all right he's no longer a human being but, <laughs> but that's that's back been to the mark zuckerberg robot caliber right yeah <laughs> Yeah, MKV. That's what it's coming out as. When I record with OBS, it comes out as an MKV file. I remember having that issue. Yeah. Okay. I, this is weird. Um, the stream is like really messing itself up in my OBS. But I think I know we have a few other questions. I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. But we we'll, we we'll just might have to do a part two where we just talk about security stuff and, and editing and content creation but for those of you watching who stuck with us i apologize if there is weird buffering issues um i have like fiber to my house so i don't know why my internet is bugging out right now i have to investigate that a little bit when we're done but uh as long as the video is good uh, it'll be on my youtube page uh if it's not like if it's really bad and buffering we'll just have to do this again we'll set it up again but guys thank you for hanging out with us thank you for joining it i really appreciate it i do apologize that i have been making uh less content that's due to studying for the oscp and i cannot stream any of their lab stuff because of their copyright issues so i assure you guys after december 8th hopefully when i pass i'll be back on here streaming nate are you going to come back and stream anytime soon <laughs>